Another example here, um, now that would be a share on a Linux machine. Example two, let's look at a share on a Windows machine. Pretty much the same. Um, this would be the name of my Windows machine, and then the name of the shared folder, then whatever folder I wanted to mount it to. Now the option I would specify, it's, it's a SAMBA file system, so SMBFS, or I, actually I could use SIFS with Windows as well. I'm specifying read write. I do need to specify credentials as well, and you know that's going to be the username and password. And I would need to add this into the options list on the FS tab line. And so that that means you know my server booted up, and it read the FS tab file, either example one or example two. Not only would it mount the local partitions as I told it to, and the local hard drives that are physically connected, but it would go out on the network and see what types of shares that server connected to, and mount those, uh, and make those available to users as well. So that would be a, you know great if I had network storage or a network file server or something like that. Um, okay. So let's look at what we've covered so far, right? We've covered the device and the mount point and the file system. And now let's look at options. There are many, and this is sort of a large section here. So if I come down to options, the user ID and the group ID sets the owner and the group. It can be the user's name or their ID, just as the GID can be the group's name or the group ID. And let's see if I, you know, up here I, I kind of threw an example. Um, Here's an example of mounting NTFS, right? I'm choosing NTFS 3G, and I couldn't fit all this on one line, but just imagine this is on the same line, so auto, users, any user can mount it. Now I'm using the user ID 1000. And if you're not sure what that is, if you take a, a gander, take a look, um, let me go and, let me pull this over here, and let me cat Etsy password. And if I look at the contents of this file, you know, this will give me users and their passwords that I've created. And I could also look at groups, um, cat, etsy, group, okay, and these are groups and their group IDs. And um, if I were going to make a user, let me do this, sudo um, user, user add, and we'll call her Samantha. And let me give her a password. And password. And password. And again, now let me cat Etsy and. Okay. And so there's Samantha, there's her ID there. And let me cat. If I were going to make a group, let me do. Um, And let's do um, okay. And if I were to go to Etsy group, and then there's the group ID. So the GID, all right, and the UID, the UID and the GID. So not hard to get, you know, if I have a user. <coughs> So I would add this if I wanted to give that particular user and that particular group permission to access that particular partition. Um, and that's what you would call um, you know, the U mask, the user mask, okay? And the user mask would be, let me go find a U mask here. Here you go, here's a U mask up here for the VFET. All right, so the user mask would govern the user and the group and other. Remember, just like when you say HMI, there's three categories. So that's the user, that's the group, and that's other. Now it is the inverse. UMask is the inverse of chmod. So if I were going to give somebody full permission, I would do sudo chmod 777 and then some object. And that would give all the permission, read, write, execute to the user, all the permission, read, write, execute to the group, and all the permission, read, write, execute to other. So like Windows is everyone. But UMask is, is the opposite. It's the inverse of that. So what I'm saying is, what would I take away? So here I would take away no permission, no permission, and no permission. So whatever permissions they had that I had ch mounted via POSIX permissions, that's what they would have when that partition or that drive was mounted. All right, that's that's the U mask. That's part of it. Um, so in addition to the U mask, we also have a a D mask. Okay, and D mask is are the directory permissions to remove. Um, and again, that's the inverse of chmod. So on that directory, 
um, if the demask was set to 0, 2, and 7, here I'm saying remove no permission. Um, you know, here, remember it's read and write and execute, so I'm saying remove write. And here I'm saying remove everything. Um, that's the directory mask or demask. Now the file mask is, again, it's the inverse, just like the U mask and the D mask, but the file mask has to do with file permissions. And remember, it's saying what would you remove, not what would you add. So in this case, I'm removing the execute permission. Remember, it goes read, write, execute, and that would be four and two and one, the way POSIX permissions work. Here, I'm removing the write and the execute permission. You just add them together, or concatenate, that's three. And here, I'm removing all permission, okay, on the F mask there. Um, and again, if we go up here, we can look at, the, at a syntax example. Let me hop on up here and just look in at a syntax example. All right, so here's the U mask, and here's the D mask, and here's the F mask. And that you know, can carefully control access to that partition, to that folder, by setting those options. Um, pretty much everything you can do with access control entries in a discretionary access control list, an Active Directory, in a Windows environment, and NTFS, you can do the same thing with Unix and POSIX permissions, or, or in Linux. But um, now these last two are you know short and simple, but we haven't finished all the options yet. I mean that covers the UMS, the DMS, and the FMS. Those are some of the permission options, but there are more. Um, there's read only or read write, and they are self-explanatory. SWID and SCID, so um, the special user ID and the special group ID, whether or not I'm going to allow that. User, it'll permit any user to mount it. No user means that only root can mount it. Execute, I will permit the execution of binaries. No execute means that you will not be allowed to run programs on that directory. It's a good safety precaution for, say, if I'm going to share something online and I don't want people to be able to run you know, executable code, which can be worms and viruses and so forth. Auto, to mount things automatically. Or no auto, not to mount things automatically, to specify manually. Sync, to synchronize, you know, um, or to not synchronize, to be asynchronous. Um, you know, if it's synchronized, then IO processes will wait, uh, you know, in one after the other in, in proper order. And asynchronous, you know, it's it's sort of a free for all. Um, although there is a performance advantage. Um, in this case, whether you know a not dev or no dev, whether or not to interpret character and block special devices or no devices, do not do so. And the underscore net dev is special. It's for mounting network shares, such as NFS, Samba, SSH, FS, SIFS. And it simply says, wait until the net, you know, network share, wait until the boot process is finished and the network has come up and any you know, connected shares have been connected to, and then try to mount it. Um, because of course, if it tried to mount it before that happened, it wouldn't be able to find it. You know, there would be no point. So some interesting options there. And those are all part of, of this, the options part in syntax. And then finally, dump an FSCK order. And this has to do with whether or not you're going to back it up and whether or not you're going to do a file system check when you boot. FSCK, if you haven't used it, sort of like the Linux version of CHKDSK. Syntax is very similar, and the way it works is very similar. So again, you know, zero will ignore it. Remember, in, in the computer world, you know, zero is false and one is true. So zero false, ignore it, don't back it up. One true, back it up and pay attention. For FSCK, again, zero is false, don't bother, don't check it. One is true. Yes, please check it. Okay. Now, currently in Ubuntu 10.10 um, and Maverick Meerkat, um, you know, and also in Lucid Links, these are the values of when you know the defaults. If I just say defaults, it will be mounted as read/write. Um, the substitute user ID. Um, you know, in this case, you want to kind of prevent you know programs and things from executing. Um, you know, device here, um, execute. Things will be allowed to execute, but we don't, you know, we don't really want to allow, or we want to limit root access with the special user account. Um, auto in this case um, on the file system, and uh, no user and asynchronous. Those are sort of, you know, the defaults there. So, we'll go ahead and save that, and we will mount them. We will come back and mount these um, in our next step. So, you know, having gone over this file and configuration, having talked about what all the permissions are, this is what we'll need to tweak along with Samba to be able to make our NTFS partitions, um, you know, available to others on a Windows network.